Uh, maybe we should start uh, now. Uh, welcome, Merlin. Uh, today we're going to talk about Morpho and uh, what you guys are doing with Bouncer and the incentive campaign you just launched on Paladin. Maybe to start uh, with everything, do you want a bit uh, to give a brief intro about yourself and then uh, a bit more infos about Morpho? We'll delve deeper later on, of course. Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm Merlin, um, one of the co-founders of, uh, of Morpho. So we are four. Um, and uh, I'm mostly handling like writing the smart contracts, uh, leading like the Solidity team, and uh, more and more like uh, having a managerial uh, role, uh, doing like uh, the, the bridge between like uh, the, the different sections, uh, like growth, product, uh, engineer, uh, engineer uh, engineering, and research. And, uh, and that's it, we built uh, Morpho. So what is Morpho? It's, it's um, a lending protocol. Uh, such as Aave and Compound. Uh, the only difference is like you have better rates and how Morpho is doing that. It's uh, on, on lending pools like Aave or, or Compound, you have, you have a huge, uh, huge spread uh, because there are uh, um, a few borrowers, uh, less borrowers than, uh, than suppliers. And uh, then uh, um, uh, because of the interest rate model, there is like um, a spread that is created. So, for instance, like the supply rate on USDC would be uh, one percent, and the borrow rate will be three percent. And what Morpho is doing is like it's creating a peer-to-peer -peer layer on top of those uh, existing lending pools, where suppliers and borrowers will be matched together, and uh, a supplier won't uh, share their rewards uh, to the, uh, the, uh, with the other uh, suppliers anymore, um, and the borrower uh, won't need to to pay like a, 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 a large um, uh, borrow APY, and so it's a win-win situation between both supplier and, and borrower. So instead of uh, like paying three percent in my example. Uh, as a borrower, you'll pay only 2%. And as a supplier, uh, instead of earning only 1%, you'll, you'll earn uh, 2%. And um, so that's uh, the added value of Morpho. The ex user experience is seamless. It's exactly the same as Aave, the same liquidity, uh, same risk parameters, except you, you have better rates if you if you're match. So I think that's uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you for that explanation. So uh, I'm Fig, one of the co-founders of Paladin. Uh, and more generally, I think for those who don't know what we do at Paladin, we're specializing governance market, vote markets. And today we're talking about uh, Morpho's expansion into the balancer markets. I think what's very interesting about Morpho is that uh, there's a lot of talks about DeFi, especially right now being an eco chamber, just building for DeFi. What's really interesting about Morpho is that you guys are clearly building technology that can be replicated on, on I wouldn't say any, but on a lot of different financial infra infrastructures. And uh, it has paid off because you've talked about the technicalities of it, but uh, you haven't talked about the fact that Morpho has been successful in the sense that you guys launched six months ago, right? A yeah, bit I more? Think it's a bit more. Like the first protocol was in June, so perhaps nearly one year. And Aave, Almost, perhaps, yeah. I don't remember exactly, but November. And uh, I think uh, Aave has uh, much more traction than, uh, than the compound version. Yeah, because Aave has more traction in yeah. general, right? But it has been successful in the, in the sense that Morpho has attracted hundreds of millions of dollars of TVL. Yeah, yep. I think like we have we had, uh, half a billion um, in that period. So we are quite happy with that. Uh, it was it was one of the fat, fastest uh, growth in the space. I, I mean, uh, in, on Ethereum, I'd say. Yeah, that's impressive. Congratulations. So, in general, what I think is interesting to understand is that uh, you guys have built this lending protocol that is growing very fast, that is very innovative, and uh, you don't have a live token yet, in the sense that you've been distributing a token, but it's not live, right? Um, I mean, it's not transferable, so it can okay. be made transferable um, via the, the governance, 
uh, I would say, but it, the, there's no plan on our end because for now, I mean, it's like um, it's just a governance tokens for now, and and it's working well, uh, I'd say, and um, we try not to overthink governance or uh, or to yes, we try to 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 make things si uh, simple. And if there's a need to make it transferable, then I think uh, we will push uh, that. But for now, it's not uh, on, on top of the agenda. That's interesting because it's the opposite with us, right? We started in a similar way, but we overthink governance in a daily basis. It's basically what we're building in a yeah. sense. <laughs> um, so if you don't have a governance token today that's liquid, uh, what kind of tokens do you want to put into liquidity into bouncer so wh where do you want liquidity to flow into so for now we are uh, paying uh, usd so uh, we th there is one way we could use the morpho tokens because uh, through the governance uh, we can wait list some contract addresses to transfer tokens so basically for instance if you have an integrator that is plugged into ave and uh, that has many users uh, perhaps this integrator wants to share the, the Morpho tokens that it, uh, he, it has accrued over time to, to its uh, users. And so through the governance, you can uh, create like a whitelisting proposal to, to be able to transfer tokens to, to its users. So that's uh, a way to do it. Uh, for now, um, let's say, uh, I, I think we, we don't want to overthink things. So for now, we are just only uh, using USDC, and we are playing around like Quest, uh, trying to uh, like to to compute what's the best strategy, etc. Uh, so right now, I think we, we are just playing. And uh, what I want, what I wanted to, what I was trying to get at was, uh, mm -hmm. what types of token are you trying to get liquidity for? So it's the I'm talking about the MA US, yeah, uh, USD okay. pool, what <laughs> it is, how useful it is, etc. Okay, okay. No, no problem. Um, so um, on, on Balancer, you have like um, uh, boosted pools, um, and uh, and I think like Ave has like a, a big uh, boosted pool already. So we have like uh, stable coins. So basically, it's a, uh, it's a pool where you can trade USDC, Dai, and USDT, uh, and pegged uh, stable uh, uh, stable coin tokens, and um, and the thing is, like, uh, it's super. It's kind of more efficient, by, like, than than um, a normal pool in the way that um, say that um, you your wise token, the idle tokens that are used not used for uh, trades are put on Aave, and uh, this is a super uh, super interesting thing because LP providers can generate yields. Uh, and that cover impermanent loss on on the their uh, balance your position, and with Morpho, um, because it's uh, Morpho, uh, Morpho Ave is an optimized version of of uh, Ave. Uh, without that, it could be interesting to to create the same thing, but using Morpho as the underlying protocol that is generating yields. And basically, what we're doing is like. We're trying to um, uh, direct uh, balancer of rewards to to that pool uh, that could be uh, re really like liquidity providers could really uh, benefit from that because you'd be uh, you'd have like better rates through Morpho but also balancer of rewards at the same time and it would be like uh, quite crazy for uh, LPs I, I guess. Yeah, so I, I want to come back quickly to balancer yep. pools or the people in the uh, to uh, yeah boosted yeah, pools we in can, general. We can, we can describe what yeah, it is. just to give exactly. So when balancer v two was announced almost two years ago, this personally got me very excited because uh, they were saying that you would basically create they would create an AMM that would be both able to use the liquidity for swaps, which is the whole purpose of an AMM, and at the same time it would enable it for the liquidity to instead of being idle, do something else. This promise took a lot of time to take shape and, and become something, but has become first the core pools. The core pools are places when you can have a, a yield-bearing token that's farming and claiming the rewards, 
while providing liquidity. And the boosted pools are pools composed of linear pools. So basically linear pools are a form where one token is staked and unstaked at the same time. What does it mean? It means that you can have USD on Morpho and liquid. And depending on how much USD is needed for swaps, these USDs are going to be unstaked from Morpho. So if you create a, a boosted pool of multiple linear pools of Morpho tokens, for example, USDC, DAI, and USDT, what you have is that you have a pool of tokens that are theoretically as much as possible staked into Morpho, but also provide liquidity in USDC. This means two things. First, GLPs are making much more money than if they were simply doing uh, LPing in AMM. That's the first thing. And the second thing, it means it can bring more TVL to the products it's doing. So right now we've been seeing uh, Aave pioneer this with the Aave boosted pool that uh, Merlin just mentioned before, but we expect to see a lot more uh, lending protocols and we're glad to see more for trailblazing this uh, because we think it's going to be a really efficient way for people to bring in more liquidity to their protocols while having liquidity on the markets. Uh, I hope I was far enough. Do you want to add something to this, uh, Merlin? No, I, th I think it's perfect. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have much to, 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 to add on, on that, uh, except that it's a really interesting model uh, for, for an AMM. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, do you think you see uh, a way for Morpho to go even further with the boosted pools? Yeah, um, so I think like uh, the, the boosted pool uh, for Avi has already like 45 million or something like that. And uh, the, I think that last time I, I checked like the IP, APR was about like 3%. If like, um, uh, a part of that uh, that liquidity moves to the pool uh, to the Morpho boosted pool. Then it would be it would be matched, um, and and if it's matched, then the APR would be like way better than on Aave. And I think it's like a huge market market opportunity uh, for like uh, LPs on, on the uh, current Aave pool to to move their liquidity to. Yeah, uh, maybe Morpho have a, have a pool. It's kind of a no-brainer because basically you're just uh, you're just uh, just having a better rates. So in theory, um, you if like the market was uh, would be, uh, was rational, like all the mo uh, liquidity would have uh, moved to to Morpho. Uh, but uh, as always, you, you need to, to consider the friction to, to do that, uh, the, also the smart contract risk, uh, because uh, some persons could fear to, to, to move to Morpho because it's, it's another layer of contract on top of Aave, um, uh, even though we are confident that, uh, that there's no issue with our contract, of course, but, uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's uh, one thing to, to take into account. And uh, but I think there's room for improvement and and to reach and bootstrap that liquidity. Uh, I think like um, uh, redirecting balance or rewards to to the multiple pools is it's a mandatory step uh, step to 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 reach uh, uh, reach that goal. And I think that this is where Paladin <laughs> comes uh, into play. Yep, uh, that's uh, that's it. We do. Too. What, what I think is very interesting with Boosted Pool that remains unexplored uh, is simply that uh, they can become ecosystem currencies in the sense that uh, we have taken the habit of pairing our liquidity with ETH or with USDC. Uh, Paladin is the first protocol to do this, of course. Um, I think that when you become a project that has his custom busted, uh, Boosted Pool, there is an incentive for to build liquidity around this boosted pool because it creates network effects and feedback loops where the more people uh, deposit in DLP to provide liquidity, the more it's going to provide deposits into Morpho, which is going to create more fees and create more incentives for people to deposit as LPs. So yep. it creates a new and feedback loop. And also on that point, like on the, the matching gene, uh, or is it working on Morpho? It's like volume sorted. So basically, if you're bigger, 
you more likely to be matched. It's uh, we did we did that at the beginning, uh, because uh, because of the blockchain constraints, uh, I would say, and and uh, so as you say, like uh, there's like a network effect where if more and more user uh, users are depositing into the Morpho pool, then there's a, a higher likelihood that this pool uh, to be matched and then to to have uh, to have better yields. So yes. Okay, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I have two more questions, and uh, then I think we can go to towards questions, uh, towards uh, questions uh, in the audience, maybe. Uh, the first one is, uh, do you think, uh, uh, where do you see, I, I don't want to say boosted pools, but do you think the fact that we can both have uh, in, uh, tokens in an AMM and doing being productive at the same time mm -hmm. can go further than simply depositing into lending. I mean, do you see some more integrations um, with with bad answer or like over protocols? Because I have an over protocol uh, from the French Mafia in mind. Um, again, of which, course, which which is called Mangrove, where it's yeah. like a, a, a non um, provide uh, provided liquidity AMM where. In fact, uh, you can just uh, deposit into whatever uh, you want, and you just promise to uh, promise to provide the liquidity at the at the right moment. And when someone uh, do a trade, uh, then uh, the the liquidity would be unstake from the strategy and removed from the strategy, and then uh, the trade will occur. And at this moment, where you unlock that. Uh, uh, that opportunity, uh, you can create like whatever strategy you, you want. So you can deposit on on the lending pool. You can deposit on I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever you want, uh, just as long as you you uh, you, uh, you you can provide the liquidity and, uh, instantly. And uh, I think like Mangrove is pushing that particular idea even further. Uh, but it's not deployed yet. I, I think it's like a schedule for the, the, this month or something like that. Uh, but it's much more, oh, it's much more complex. Um, and you can do that only on L2s or perhaps on Ethereum, but it's much more like gas, um, uh, uh, gas intensive than, uh, than what Balancer, Balancer is, uh, did. So I think like balancer is like a really well designed and a first step uh, toward that uh, those kind of uh, AMM. That's a, that's a, a bit of alpha for the yeah, people uh, listening to us. <laughs> no, don't apologize. I mean that's the whole point. Uh, people like showing up and hearing these kind of things. Uh, my second question is of course much more related to Morpho. Uh, did you guys release something new lately? Maybe that's the perfect time to talk about it. And if so, do you think uh, there are uh, ramifications? Where do you want to go now that you've released Morpho uh, on Ave and Compound? So, um, right now we are uh, we are will deploy like Morpho Ave V3, uh, which is a bit harder to integrate, uh, honestly, compared to uh, Ave V2 and Compound. Uh, so I think we'll release that uh, very soon. Um, I, I, I won't uh, give you a date, but uh, but uh, it's a uh, quite interesting more full version, and um, uh, we are leveraging uh, permit two. Uh, this version will also be able to. Uh, I mean, you can create different more full instances uh, related to a specific emote. So I don't know if you know about emotes. Or are they free but basically it's like it's called efficient mode where you have uh, better risk parameters so you can have uh, more leverage or uh, so it's um, and uh, it's like optimized for correlated assets like uh, if uh, if flavors asset or stable coins asset etc so we have that uh, what do you have uh, in terms of new features uh, we have account management, uh, account management, where it would be e even easier for an integrator to build on top of uh, Morpho, where you'll be able to move your position 
for instance, uh, from like a, uh, an EOA to Instadap or to DeFi Saver in just one click. So I think it will be quite powerful and we'll uh, continue to create some like a perif periphery contract to improve that UX. So that's for now, but for like the next month or year, I uh, can't say really, uh, can't say anything about that. We have, we are doing a lot of research uh, and proof of concept of uh, ideas uh, that we have. And I think we'll, uh, we'll do like um, cool, cool things uh, in the, the year, uh, year ahead. Well, I have no doubts about it. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why we appreciate working a lot with Morpho, it's not just because they're French. <laughs> it's also because uh, you guys ship a lot and it's good to see teams that keep pushing the boundaries, especially in the current market. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, the, the incentive campaign is full already. Uh, so I can't say to people, go vote because uh, well, yeah, I, it's I already full. It was a small campaign. Um, I, I, we need to uh, to think about it, but uh, perhaps uh, we'll, uh, for sure we'll extend it. Uh, but I don't know if we'll uh, like increase the, the amount of rewards or whatever. Um, uh, so perhaps there is an opportunity to, to vote for the next uh, cycle, next period. Oh, the, no, there's no doubt there will be more opportunities, <laughs> uh, especially because part of the votes coming came from wrappers. So they basically reset every two rounds. So there will be more space in the next two rounds. Anyway, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? If not, we'll move on to the questions. No, no. Um, perhaps just um, a, a thanks for like the Paladin team where um, uh, you, you've been really helpful for us to, to, to understand better like uh, I would say the token ecosystem, uh, also like to provide the, those kind of tools that are quite precious where you want to bootstrap um, uh, liquidity for, uh, for, uh, for per or uh, on a AMM or on, on balance or on curve. So it's really helpful and uh, we'll try to, to leverage uh, your, what you did. So yeah, just, uh, just wanted to, to, to say thank you for that. Yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Okay, guys, are there any questions? So this is interesting because Twitter spaces, you either have a lot of questions or no questions at all. And it really depends on the community you have uh, as, a, as a Twitter space. Some of them are very shadowy <laughs> and they come and ask the questions on the Discord server and the others ask a lot of questions. Uh, Perhaps, uh, uh -huh. I see one request. Uh, Hello, can you hear me all right? Yes. Hey. So, I missed the slight Morpho Alpha leak um, where you were talking about building something on an L2. Can you uh, reiterate that one? I need the, the rare Morpho Alpha leak. Uh, no, no. Uh, I, did I say that? Like uh, that we were working on on, on, on L2? I, I was no. talking about another project. Yeah, something that's only compatible with L2s. I like just joined. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. About that. Uh, it's Mangrove. Uh, Mangrove, I think you can, uh, if you type type mangrove DAO on, on Twitter, uh, you see them. And I think they are a bit teasing their uh, release. And I think you can. Yeah, if you type mangrove DAO, uh, you should see, uh, see it. All right, I'm looking. And uh, basically, it's, they say like it's a pro programmable order book. But, um, and uh, basically, you can just create strategies that are generating yields and promise that uh, you'd exchange, for instance, USDC against if at that price. And uh, if uh, if there is a taker for your order, then uh, your liquidity will be removed from that strategy and uh, the trade will occur. And after, you can add a fallback to, like, to redeposit your your liquidity that uh, you exchange uh, into the same strategy or another. And uh, this is really interesting. And, uh, I think they will deploy on, on Polygon 
to four because it's really gas intensive. Um, and yeah, so this is this is not a morpho leak. It's like a mangrove leak. leak. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm lucky. I missed the morpho leak. But that actually, that's a very interesting project. I'll have to look into it. Sure. If there's no other questions, can I hog the the questions? Yep, I think so. So Merlin, what do you think? So some of the features in Aave V3, I'd imagine, were pretty complicated to like make Morpho compatible. Like whether it's you know the isolation in E mode or like I don't know, like some of their other stuff can be pretty complicated. What do you, do you think that these features are like a really big improvement in the lending market space? Uh, well, uh, it depends. I think like uh, for the E mode, uh, I would say yes because uh, I think this is where um, Aave is. Uh, getting a lot of traction and Morpho as well. Uh, if you take the data, you'll see that uh, people are like depositing um, STEF and uh, leveraging on wrap if uh, to earn like uh, the uh, the yields of uh, the ST uh, the native yields of the STEF. So I think the the E mode for STEF, uh, I mean for if flavors uh, tokens is really useful. For stable coins, uh, I'm not sure at all that it's really useful to be honest. Uh, for the other uh, features on 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 AVV3, I mean, like I think you have things that you could have just removed from uh, from the protocol, like I don't know, perhaps the stable uh, stable rates that are not really used. Um, you also have like um, some tricky things, but uh, not going into the details, but you have like some tricky things where you can set up a same price source for emotes, um, which can be really dangerous if you, I mean, if you have like uh, the if, the staked if, the R if that are sharing the same price, if there is a DPEG, then you can create a, Creates lots of bad debt for the lending protocol, uh, and discussing with the AVE team, they won't um, uh, then won't turn on that uh, that feature, and I think it should shouldn't have been there uh, from the beginning. And you have um, some occurrences of that that, that kind of uh, small features that are just uh, just useless. But uh, I, I guess. It's kind of hard to 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 see in advance everything that uh, that you you've created that would be useless and and not used. It's like uh, there's like a a difference between the vision and and then the the, the usage um, after deployment. I, I guess. No, fair enough. Um, I do agree that I guess like E mode is probably the biggest one, um, and the the liquid staking derivative, like leveraging against those narratives, is going to be it's going to be big going into I don't know the next year or two. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think there's not a, a a real usage of isolation mode to be honest, at least right now. But, but perhaps it's because it's not mature enough, and like user on uh, users are not playing uh, in a, uh, enough with the 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 AVE protocol. But uh, I guess yeah, we'll see. Well, they haven't enabled. Uh, the isolation mode for uh, like for ETH assets, it's only stable yep. coins, and it's, I think it's only on a Avalanche. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. I do think that like if they did, it could be pretty big. But obviously, there are like you know extreme dangers with like high leverage on these things. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, totally agree. And uh, there are plenty of things I guess that could be improved. Like, uh, I mean, uh, what I'd say is like uh, the lending uh, lending protocols right now, even. I mean, Morpho, we are inheriting risk parameters, so we have the same flows, but it's kind of hard to, to manage. We, see, we saw that with um, the USDC and DAI DPEGs, where you, you need to have like a constant monitoring of the risk parameters uh, of, uh, of those lending protocols, and it's really heavy in terms of uh, maintenance uh, and uh, costing a lot of in, in terms of... Uh, operational, I mean, it has a, a huge operational cost. And I think there's a way 
uh, way to, to, to ways to, to improve like uh, the the risk parameter side and uh, and perhaps not relying on like a EV heavy governance uh, monitoring to to make the, the protocol uh, safer. Have you looked into um, what B protocol is doing with like their on chain? Uh, it's like a volatility oracle or something like that. They're they're sort of looking to combat the the governance overhead. I don't know if you guys have done any research on that in, uh, in the morpho side of things, but they're looking into something around these around this area. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you say B protocol, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, we we discussed it with them. Uh, we also also looking for like uh, different protocols. I think like one has an interest uh, interesting. Uh, where I think like the the collateral factor was like uh, based on the utilization of the pool or something like that, but I, I don't think it's released yet. I don't remember exactly the name. Uh, there are plenty of interesting de design uh, that are popping up, but uh, we, we, we are not really happy that what what has been currently done on, on the I mean uh, on the research side of Morpho. And so we'll, we're trying to, to, to figure out uh, what w would be uh, at least a, a, a good next step uh, to solve that, uh, those kind of issues. But um, yeah. Fair enough, Wolf. Good luck with that. That's a bold task. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. S someone just messaged me a question. So I suppose they were too shy to ask it themselves. Uh, they asked, seeing that Compound, both Compound and Ave were going multi-chains, did Morpho have plans of following them on different chains? Or at least for now, were you focused on staying on Ethereum or most of the volume is? Yeah, um, so uh, that's a good question. So for now, I think we're really focused on, on staying on Ethereum. Uh, the reason is, like, uh, I, I, I talked a bit about, like, uh, the operational costs of like monitoring different protocols uh, is really heavy. Um, and I think what we want to do at Morpho is like um, uh, proposing the, like the best protocol, landing protocols out there. And if you deploy like multiple instances, that means that you need to allocate part of the team just to monitor those, uh, those protocols on the different uh, chains. And, and while you know that it's not like the, the end game protocol um, and, uh, and that you know that there, there are plenty of different ways that you can improve your protocol. And I think that it's in the best interest of the Morpho, uh, Morpho DAO to, to just push innovate uh, to focus on innovation and push innovation further into the landing, landing space than just uh, wasting time on different different chains. This is uh, at least our strategy. Uh, perhaps it's not the best. And, uh, and uh, we can see that uh, over particles uh, had like, uh, ha have different strategies where, and they are accruing a lot of liquidity and uh, that um, it's generating yeah, yields and they, uh, with those yields, they can pay like developers to, to do uh, research to improve the protocols. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's a different strategy, but uh, there's no plan on our end. And at the very end, I guess what, what you can do is like perhaps fork Morpho, even though I wouldn't recommend it because it's quite complex and they are like, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite complex. And like every fork uh, of protocols uh, usually and uh, in like a really, really uh, bad, uh, uh, bad state, like uh, hacked or uh, yeah, hacked. Thank you very much for showing up everyone. Uh, thank you Merlin for your time. Uh, we look forward to keep working with you guys around the Balancer ecosystem and are happy to see that the first incentive campaign is a big success. Um, maybe the last thing we can end on is where is the best place to follow what's happening in the Morphoverse? Uh, 
Yeah, um, I think you can just follow uh, Morpho Labs on uh, the Twitter um, and uh, follow perhaps uh, one of the uh, uh, core team members like um, Paul or, or, or me. We are tweeting sometimes. We are not really good at marketing. <laughs> um, perhaps it's a French uh, French roots, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I guess, I guess uh, Twitter is a way. Okay, and for Paladin, you guys can follow our Twitter account, which is hosting this Twitter space, of course. Uh, but uh, most of our community and uh, shenanigans are happening on Discord, so feel free to click on the link on the Twitter and go there. We also have a growing Lens account, join the Lens family. And yeah, it was a pleasure having everyone on board. Thank you very much for your time, Thank Merlin, you. and uh, see you soon for more uh, balancer and curve <laughs> shenanigans. Sure. See you guys. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Yeah. <sighs>